Now that we can create and query an SQL table, we will now learn about window functions. What is window function SQL and how is it useful? SQL window functions express certain very useful operations more simply than regular data frame dot notation or regular SQL queries. When processing some rows, each row can use the values of other rows in calculating its value. Suppose we have a table containing a train schedule for a train line. We could use a window function to calculate the time until the next stop and add that as a new column, like so. A window function operates on a set of rows and returns a value for each row in the set. But now this value can depend on other rows in the set. The term window describes the set of rows on which the function operates. The value returned for each row can be a value from one of the rows in the window or a value from a window function that uses values from the rows in the window to calculate its value. Let's simplify this example to demonstrate what this means. Here, a window function SQL query looked at the current row and the next row adding a column, giving the value of the time column for the following row. Note that in the last row, the value of the new column is empty. That is because there is no following row. Let's look at some code for achieving this result. Now we will see how a window function in this query is able to access more than just the current row using a specific example. Take a look at this query. This query puts each column on a separate line to make the one that uses a window function more clear. Note the column having the over clause. Adding an over clause designates this query as a window function SQL query. The over clause must contain an order by clause that tells it how to sequence the rows. The lead function lets you query more than one row in a table at a time without having to join the table to itself. In this case, it returns the value of the time column from the next row in the table. Notice how this query constrains the table to only look at rows where train ID equals 324. We will now remove that constraint. This query removes the constraint on train ID that was in the previous query and adds a partition by clause inside the over clause. What will the result be? Let's find out. Once we have the time of the current row and the next row together within the same row, it is straightforward for standard SQL to calculate the difference. The time to next stop column contains the difference between the time of the current row and the time of the next row. At this point, we should now be able to obtain this result from what we've covered in this lesson.